welcome to African Television, reaching you live from the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. This is a news update, and I'm Deborah Eze. We look into the African scene in Chad. About 20 charging rebels and political opponents were freed from the Klesom prison on Tuesday. 22 men who were condemned for treason benefited from an amnesty decree last November. They represent a fraction of the nearly 300 rebels and political descendants that were granted amnesty last November. And in Senegal, the custom authorities in Senegal have seized three containers of ammunition abroad, a Guayan flood cargo ship. The authorities estimate that the three containers are worth an estimated 5.2 million US dollars, and the discovery was made in the port of Dakar, but the custom agency did not specify the date it happened. The ship has stopped to refroil after having made what the authorities described as inconsistent declarations. And now in East Africa, Madagascar, at least 10 people have died after heavy rains in Natana Narivo, the capital of Madagascar, rendering over 500 people homeless, Malagasy authorities said on Tuesday. According to the report, most of the victims were trapped in landslide or collapsed houses, especially in the deprived neighborhood of the suburbs of Atana Narivo, which has nearly 1.3 million inhabitants. Spokeswoman of the Office of Risk Management and Disaster of the Ministry of Interior, Sonia Ray, said more than 100 mm of water fell during the night from Monday to Tuesday, warning that the worst is yet to come in the next 24 hours. She added that more rains are expected throughout January. And now in Libya, over 12,000 detainees are held officially in 27 prisons and detention facilities across Libya, and thousands more are held illegally and often in inhumane conditions in facilities controlled by hand groups or secret facilities. In the latest report by United Nations, Secretary General Antonio Guterres says the UN political mission in Libya, known as UNSMIL, continues to document cases of arbitrary detention sexual violence and other violation of international law in facilities operated by the government and other groups. He added the thousands of detainees who do not appear in the official statistics provided by Libyan authorities are unable to challenge the legal basis for their continued detention. And I'm moving on in Nigeria, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, yesterday said it would not release the 2023 general election timetable until the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is signed into law. INEC Chairman Professor Mamou Jakubu disclosed this in Abuja during the Commission's first quarterly consultative meeting with political parties. According to him, the early passage of the bill is crucial in preparations for the 2023 election. The INEC chairman, however, noted that the commission would release the 2023 election timetable once the bill is signed into law, adding that all critical preparations for the poll, which is just 396 days away, must be concluded this year. And still in Nigeria, North Nigeria State reopened schools short after abduction on Monday. A total of 115 schools were ordered to resume classes. Pupils are back to school in Zamfara State, Nigeria, and on Monday, teachers happily welcomed their students after a four-month shutdown. The state's education ministry ordered 115 schools to resume classes, while 85 others designated as red were to remain closed until the security situation improves. And now on to the foreign scene. U.S. President Joe Biden top diplomat who seek to defuse a crisis with Moscow over Ukraine when he meets the Russian foreign minister in Geneva this week following visits with Ukrainian leaders in Yiv and European officials in Berlin. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel amid concerns voiced by Ukraine and its Western allies over the tens of thousands of Russian troops amassed in and near Ukraine. And still in Europe, the Czech Republic reported 28,469 new cases of coronavirus today, the highest daily tally since the pandemic reached the country of 10.7 million in March 2020. The number reported for Tuesday is more than double the 12,371 cases reported for the same day last week. And now in Afghanistan, Acting Prime Minister Mullah Hassan Akund on Wednesday called for international government to officially recognize the country's Taliban administration, saying at a news conference in Kabul that all conditions have been met. Foreign powers have been reluctant to recognize the Taliban administration, which took over Afghanistan in August, 
why Western nations led by the United States have frozen billions of dollars worth of Afghan banking assets and cost of development folding that once formed the backbone of Afghanistan economy. And now in Asia Pacific, security forces blocked several downtown streets and condoned off one of the squares in Kazakhstan's biggest city, Almaty, on Wednesday as an opposition group planned to stage protests. The oil-rich Central Asian nation was shaken this month by the worst bouts of violence in its post-Soviet history during which at least 225 people were killed, and most of them in Almaty. And now onto the sports scene, four-time champion Ghana were eliminated from the Africa Cup of Nations after crashing 3-2 to Comoros in Group C on Tuesday. The Black Stars had captain Andre Ayel sent off after 25 minutes and after wiping out a two-goal deficit, lost when Comoros Ahmed Magni scored a second goal five minutes from time. And meanwhile, Morocco and Gabon drew 2-2 in Yaoundé in the same group to retain first and second places respectively and qualify for the round of 16, which kicks off on Sunday. And finally, Thomas Tuchel says his Chelsea players look tired in the 1-1 draw against Brighton and need some days off ahead of the Super Sunday showdown against Tottenham. It was an often lethargic performance from Chelsea as they took a point from the Amex Stadium with Akim Ziyech's first half strike being cancelled out by Adam Webster's free header. And now that's all we can take on news update today. Do remember to follow all our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, Jointum and Pangram respectively. And also to stay connected and updated to subsequent programs bulletin, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us on www.africunia.tv. I am Deborah Eze. Many thanks for watching.